women feel the pressure to look good and stay in shape, so it's no surprise that our daughters do too. That pressure can translate to beauty and body image being top of mind for lots of women. But the growing number of women in Utah choosing plastic surgery to improve their appearance is startling. Today we're sharing ways to counter the culture of plastic surgery and boost positive body image. Dr. Susan Manson is a professor of leadership and ethics at Utah Valley University's Woodbury School of Business. What does the research show on this? Well, last month we released a brief, a research snapshot called um, Cosmetic Surgery and Body Image Among Utah Women. So, so we looked up all the research and interesting things about Utah. Um, actually, 12 years ago, Forbes magazine called Salt Lake City one of the vainest, well, the vainest city in the United wow, States. This is a decade but ago. Current, huh? Yeah, currently, Salt Lake City is the second, ranked as the second city uh, for plastic surgery per capita. And the state of Utah, about uh, sixth in the nation. So we do have a lot of, of cosmetics cosmetic surgery, plastic surgery, particularly for women. In Utah, about 92% of people who get plastic surgery are women. So it is almost exclusively women yeah. doing this and, yes. and, and quite... And it Sounds has like increased substantially in the last five to 10 years. And so why are you speaking out about this? Why do you think this is important? Well, I am the director of the Utah Women in Leadership Project and also run efforts to get women to go to college and stay in college. And we write briefs on things that relate to women's confidence and women's voice and women's leadership, body image, um, lack of self-confidence, things that um, relate to voice, uh, we write about, and this is one of those things. So it is worrisome for us if so many women in Utah are focused on their external looks instead of developing their minds and their hearts and their hands and their service. And so uh, not to be judgmental about because there are some definite advantages of plastic surgery in certain situations, but we worry about the upcoming generation of girls who think that they have to have something done with their bodies. Well, and this speaks to a bigger issue of, how, you know, we really do sometimes tend to attach appearance to self-worth. Yes. Is there data surrounding that? Do we know how to kind of counteract that? Absolutely. Um, developing the mind and the, your passions and what you can offer to others has been shown to be incredibly better, a better method of increasing your self-worth, your self-esteem, and your self-confidence. Um, a lot of people think that it's the external, and those are the messages that the TV gives us and the media gives right. us. Right, well those are and the so easy things to see, they right? Are. I mean, it's natural that that would be something we show. And so that is troublesome because really, in terms of making a difference to your families and making a difference in your churches and society, it's your mind, it's being educated. It's really, you know, your passions and what you have inside. And so, so oftentimes is what the research has found that when women are so focused on their external that they actually don't take care of being educated and the internal and their confidence. It's inside. interesting because everything takes time, right? I mean, Absolutely. it takes time to look beautiful. It takes time to yes. study. It takes time to serve other people. All those things take and time. And everything takes take money, including cosmetic surgery. Um, and oftentimes, one of the things in the research, uh, one study, qualitative study in the state, said that there were high school young women saving money for plastic surgery when they graduate from high school instead of saving money to go to college. Oh, that's a hard, that's hard yeah. for me to hear. Um, what is the biggest misconception about plastic surgery? Well, um, understand, it's important to understand that plastic surgery doesn't fix everything. That is critical. Oftentimes people do go into the situations thinking it's gonna change my life totally. Um, to get larger breasts, whatever the plastic surgery is, it's going to, now the research will say, and therapists will say this, that it really doesn't change your entire life. And if you're expecting that, um, oftentimes depression stays, anxiety stays, eating disorders may stay, um, it's not gonna fix everything.
And you know, I keep hearing this message of it's the inside out, right? Yeah. Working from the inside out, it doesn't change the things on the inside necessarily. Yes. You also say that we should be aware of comparison cultures. A lot of cultures have this yes. this heavy ideal toward comparison, right? We tend to look at neighbors or friends. And Absolutely, and some research will say that we have that a little bit more here in the state of Utah because we have more people of the same religion, we have more white folks, people that are homogeneous, you know, a population that we compare, and I have to say that women compare differently than men. Men compete differently than, than women do. Women often compete and compare by looks and in different ways. And so they look and compare themselves often. And that really is, especially when we look at um, research in the state that looks at perfectionism among Utah women that some of the therapists and researchers feel like, like we have that more. And so when women are trying to be perfect on the outside as well as the inside, there's a lot of, of stress and anxiety that comes with that and depression that comes with that. And I love that you say keep your conversation positive. That's one way we can combat that. How do, you, how do we do that when well, it feels a little overwhelming? my biggest concern with that really is that the research has shown that when women, uh, mothers, as well as, you know, neighbors, but particularly mothers, if we talk in front of our daughters or say to our daughters often, I need to lose five pounds, I need to lose 10 pounds, or I'm going to change, I need to change how I am. We have five-year-olds and 10-year-old daughters. In fact, the research in the United States says that 82% that of 10-year-old girls are already afraid of being fat. Oh, gosh. So when they come up with the, the mother just saying things in front of them, and maybe other people too, they think from a young age that something's gonna be wrong with them and that something is wrong with them. We need to help young women and girls, for that matter, understand their bodies are not just to be admired, that they do things, they do sports, they, yeah. you know, even having solid legs like I do and my right. kids. You can use that you for do sports. sports. You give hugs, yes. you help people with your that bodies. These you bodies these are made to do cool things yes. and our minds are made to do cool things, not to just be admired by so other really people. So really strengthening your mind, strengthening yeah. your heart, So our conversations need to be positive with our girls and boys for that matter. Yeah, absolutely. Where can people go to find more about this topic? Um, I, on our website, the Utah Women in Leadership Project website at uvu.edu slash uwlp. And just one last thing, I really do focus on really looking at helping our girls and young women and women understand how important it is to strengthen their minds by going to college and graduating and by really looking deeper and doing those things that will truly have long lasting effects in terms of their confidence in, and in terms of how they use that confidence in their minds to help other people. Thank you so much, such an important message. Thank you.